also joined by Dr. Bin Chen. Bin Chen is a research assistant professor at Northwestern University. Hey, Ben. Hello, Ted. Hello, Joanne. Great today that we can be here together over Zoom to know a little bit more about the latest paper that's coming out from uh, your group. Yeah, hi, uh, this is Chong Wen. Currently, I'm a postdoc researcher in the Sargent Group at the University of Toronto. So my research uh, interests are cross-site solar cells and also the water splitting using tandem solar cells. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what is it you're doing in this world? What's the, the key innovation? Basically, we all know that the cross-site solar cell is basically one of the most promising green technology that provides us with electric power. So in this paper, we are studying the inverted structure of cross-site solar cells because they have the potential of in both efficiency and stability. But to further improve the stability, there is a very critical issue there, which is the so-called buried interface. The connection between the transport layer and the proskite and also the chemical instability there make it quite hard to achieve the real long-term stability. We basically screened some Lewis space molecules containing a different functional group, including oxygen, phosphorus, nitrogen, and also we found that phosphorus containing uh, Lewis space molecules can give us the strongest connection at the interface with both nickel oxide and proskite to improve the stability. And then what we think is we need to make a, a kind of bridging bridging between the substrate, uh, between the uh, transport layer and proskite. So we choose the diphenylphosphenol propene, which is called a DPVP. It has two phosphine groups which connects with both proskite and the nickel oxide, make the bridging effect there and uh, improve the stability. We found that DVP can, first of all, decrease the defect density of proskites, just give us a high, relatively high efficiency of small area proskite solar cells with efficiency over of over 24.5, obviously very good stability of more than 3,000 hours. Yeah, this is basically the story of this work. Looking at these figure, can you tell us three or four sentences? What's the biggest problem here for these PIN devices and how do you solve it? Basically, proskite and nickel oxide, they are two different materials. They have different, for example, thermal uh, expansion coefficient. They have different chemical properties. So first of all, it's a little bit hard to make a very good connection between them. The thing is, we need to find a molecule to make a real good connection between them. And the second is that the nickel oxide itself is not that stable. The charge state of nickel oxide can be changed. And mm -hmm. also the nickel oxide can interact with proskites, forming non-conductive, like low dimensional materials. So uh, for the inverted structure proskites with nickel oxide as the HTL, we need to, first of all, we need to passivate nickel oxide. And then second, we need to make a better connection between them. Can you tell, tell us a little bit more, how does your molecule achieve that goal? As shown here in figure E and F, the phosphorus just interact with lead and also interact with nickel and make the bridging effect. And also this configuration, the bridging configuration is proved by, by the DFD calculation because this is basically the energy preferred configuration. What kind of impact do you expect your result to have on the perovskite? A research community. What we do is first we want to try to get a generalized study of all the Lewis space molecules that that are widely used in in this community. So instead of focusing on one specific one, we first of all we tried the study of different Lewis space molecules. Basically, covers all the Lewis space that people are using for proskites, containing the oxygen, phosphorus, nitrogen, and sulfur. So, we, so first of all, in this paper, we make a generalized conclusion that the phosphorus basically provides the best connection, the strongest connection in all of the Lewis space molecules that this community is using. And Chongwen, could you help us also help us see how this fits into the picture of making perovskite solar cells that last and how does it take us closer to commercial impact, like compared to the best previously published reports of efficient, stable solar cells? How does this work compare? And then what remains to be done? Thanks, Ted. So first of all, the room temperature MPP tracking 
is one of the longest lifetime that has been published compared with others. And then there's one stability test, which is the high temperature and open circuit. That is quite important because that basically is the most difficult stability test. And uh, not too many people, probably just a few publications before, reported this kind of uh, difficult stability test. Also, can, because when you measure the source cells on an open circuit occasion, basically you will care about the iron microgation and a lot of uh, other things take into consideration. So this is most, to my understanding, it's the most comprehensive. You basically measures every, you basically include every possibility of degradation into this uh, stability test. So this is quite important. And if your soil cell can pass such kind of stability test, including the thermal, the light, the iron microgation, then it will give a, make the researcher or the manufacturer more confident about the solar cell commercialization application. So this is what uh, differentiates our paper with others. Great, thanks, Chung Wen. Mm -hmm. And maybe I can now ask you a, more of a human question about the people. This work had a, a lot of authors and, and they were at a lot of places. Your, your team included the University of Toledo, Mm -hmm. uh, University of Washington in Seattle, University mm -hmm. of Toronto, the EMPA labs in Switzerland, and Northwestern University. What were the skills or talents or techniques that you needed, and why was this the team to deliver on this challenge? First of all, this paper is definitely a teamwork, and thanks to the teamwork, this paper can be published. And uh, every university or institution is very critical and important to this paper. Uh, first of all, I think Yanfa and uh, Tate uh, supervised this. We had some quite uh, important confocal PO imaging, which is done by the David Small Area solar cells, and the stability test is they were done in Toledo, and the large area device and uh, some quite important characterization, including the XPS, and uh, some others are done in the University of at the University of Toronto PFL for the EMPA. They helped we see. Um, Tough Sims measurement in uh, the Randy Ellison group in Toledo helped with the PL and TRPL. So basically everyone is quite important. Is it the first time that you publish a paper on science? And did you expect your result to be published there when you started the experiment? I would never know about it because th this work is basically from a patent. I uh, filed a patent about three at least three years ago about the DBV. So we had a patent there and then we tried to make it a paper. We were not expecting science uh, originally, but after we were, we were getting better and better device performance, stability and calculations, we are expecting higher and higher generals for this work. 